This is Hashtag Finance, presented to you by the Canadian Securities Exchange, the exchange for entrepreneurs, with your host, James Black. Thank you for watching. Today is Hashtag Finance with Jay Martin, the president of Cambridge House International. And uh, Jay and I have worked together for years, um, but we've worked together in more uh, physical type settings. <laughs> so Jay's company uh, traditionally hosts conferences. We're going to talk about sort of the future of conferences. Um, and we'll talk about content. We'll talk about, you know, our own experiences raising families during COVID. We'll maybe even talk about some of the more, um, you know, pressing issues that are happening in today's world. Um, but first and foremost, Jay, thanks for joining me today. I assume you're in Squamish and I uh, hope everything's okay. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, James, and we're all good. <laughs> so how, you, how are you in general finding, now that we're about three months into this whole situation um, with the virus, um, with COVID-19, what, what, uh, what sort of changes did you have to make both personally, but also with your company? Like what, you guys were an event-based organization um, in the physical sense. Now you guys are an event-based organization in the virtual sense. But let's talk about just all the things that have changed and then we'll unpack stuff as we move forward. Yeah, certainly, certainly. So um, to, to be completely honest, I loved every minute of quarantine. I, uh, you know, getting, having the hall pass to work from home every day. And I'm super fortunate. You know, I've got a great home office. Um, you know, I've got a, a backyard. I've got two young kids so they can get outside and play. And, and all things considered, you know, we're in a really good spot to be in quarantine. Um, <clears throat> And I love it because, you know, it, for me, I live in Squamish. It's an hour outside of Vancouver. So um, getting to the city is two hours out of my day. And as you know, that typically tends to cut into family time, not business time. So you still get the hours into the office, but you arrive home late for dinner. And so um, it's, it's been great because, yeah, the, the second uh, angle here is that my business was pretty dramatically compromised. And as a result, my hours increased substantially. So being able to be home and put in those hours and take a 10 minute break at any given time to go wrestle with my boys or make sure I'm at the dinner table. You know, it, it was really a blessing. So um, all things considered, we got super lucky. And then, you know, the, the transition from my business, James, again, like fortuitously, we made a lot of changes in the last 18 months that uh, put us in a better spot, a much better spot than we could have been in. And um, like there's been some real tragic scenarios that have unfolded and, and thankfully we, we haven't been one. And, you know, we moved to a, a remote office in November. I let my office lease go. And oh, wow. um, I actually wanted to go completely remote with the company and got a bit of pushback from the team because we're, we're somewhat traditional and, you know, our office space and, you know, all this, but um, I was pushing us to go that direction. <clears throat> I actually got cold feet, uh, say November, December, so I took out a pass at WeWork. So at least, you know, my team could have a downtown location because, you know, not everybody's home is conducive to working from home. If you're, you know, a couple, you have a dog and you're in a one bedroom apartment, you're both trying to work from home. It doesn't always work. So I thought we'll have the, the WeWork pass for anybody who needs a place and then boardroom access from when we need it. So for us to transition from that to full remote was a small step, right? It wasn't that painful. Um, and I keep a super lean team. So, you know, we had to make some cuts, but it could have been a lot worse. So I feel pretty lucky about all of it. Interesting. And so you guys having taken these steps ahead of time, uh, very, very smart. I know other companies that have done that and there you go. And uh, they, um, not too many regrets, like you, you learn to adapt. So we obviously at CSC have a very uh, nice office space in Toronto and Vancouver for that. Uh, and, 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 you know, we've had to, kind of figure out how to, to work without the office space. And especially on the marketing side, which, which I manage, it's, it's, it's interesting. We, we started evolving our space at First Canadian Place, 72nd floor, overview of the, uh, the lake and everything it was beautiful, still is. Um, uh, taking that physical space and creating a lot of physical events and content off of that and going and saying, pulling the ripcord and saying, look, we're not gonna be back here for probably the year. You know, got to that realization about six, seven weeks ago. And uh, really start to lean into, okay, how are we going to start creating content with more velocity and higher quality online? How are we going to continue to connect the same way? Because connecting is about, you know, getting that FaceTime, whether it's in person or over line, uh, online, you, you still got to create that impression. And, uh, you know, it's, it's taught us a lot of different things, as I'm sure it's taught you guys. So 
again, back to your business and what the Corva was, which was for me, always working with you guys was going to a trade show, seeing speakers, um, meeting uh, exhibitors. How does that all now work with Cambridge House when you can't have that physical space? <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a great question because that's what we're known for is the physical event, right? And, and so here, here's how it works. When we, we thankfully, because we run an event company, I feel like we were sort of on the front lines when all of this started to fall. It was super apparent from day one that we were going to be compromised. You know, depending on what your business was, it could have been unclear for weeks or even a month or more if COVID was going to affect you. But we knew on day one, it was very obvious to us. So, so that was pretty fortunate. And we had a huddle with the team and I just said, look, um, we don't know where this is going and you may not believe me, but we're not going to run an event for over 18 months. And the team looked back and thought you're overreacting and <laughs> being dramatic and all this stuff. And I just thought there's, there's not a chance like the, 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 the rate we were seeing at that point, And that was, you know, that was like early March, right? So not, not like we weren't early adopters, but this is when things started to get pretty real, I guess. And in Canada anyways, um, <clears throat> And we felt a lot of pressure from that day forward to build a virtual conference. And I, I hit the brakes on that real hard. Um, I knew that we'd see everybody and their dog producing a virtual conference over the next two months. And, yeah. um, you know, when we think about our business, we don't build conferences to build conferences, right? Like the, the pipe and drape, uh, all the logistics, that's not the fun part. What we do is we showcase content and we connect people. We just happen to build conferences to do it, right? And so keeping that as the first thought led our strategy into, call it, you know, the new version of what we do. And so we still produce tons of content, maybe even more than we used to, uh, because, you know, I'm getting interviews with guests that I've tried to get on my stage for two years and they either, like, we're not flying to Canada or, Sure, but it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars USD. Okay, I don't know if that's in the budget. Yeah. So, but we're getting them now, you know, on our on our digital platforms to come and have the same conversations we would have had on stage. And instead of speaking to an audience of you know fifteen hundred in our speaker hall, we're speaking to our our video subscription base, which is now at ninety seven thousand, right? And and so it's it's been pretty inspiring actually, and and I, I have been thoroughly enjoying these changes. They don't come without their pain and terror, you know, all the uncertainty of reinventing yourself. It's always a bit scary, but, but it's also been really fun. And um, it's allowed us to focus on the part of the business we like the best, which is producing amazing content and connecting people. And so uh, we've, we've got our heads wrapped around the new content strategy. It's going really well. We've got a couple shows we produce. I host one, Georgia Tucker from my office hosts another, and then we've got some, some other stuff going on. Uh, sort of one-off features and whatnot. And then we do a lot of editorial. Uh, but the second piece of this is obviously connecting people, which is equally as important and the second ingredient in a conference. So um, again, like we looked at the virtual conference platforms that were on the market. If we could just sort of, you know, lease something off the shelf, maybe build something from the ground up. And um, I saw a lot of great content hosting platforms, but not a lot of relationship building platforms. And that's now what we are building and um i'm really excited about this and I, I i am excited to show it to you james you know we're only like two weeks away from having a prototype that that I'm, I'm very pumped about but think of it like a shareholder management pipeline um where we take our audience which between now video and and email is about 140,000 investors that look to us for information um and, and instead of trying to find <clears throat> well instead of hosting an event for nine thousand of them you know we can host an event for all of them and, and show them the variety of deals that are in our ecosystem, uh, help them find deals they might be more partial to based on criteria they select as they navigate. Yeah, you can, you can target segment your audience far more yeah. effectively digitally than you can at a show. 100%. Everyone comes in equally at a show and you hope they hit the right marks for them, but online you can really cut that list up and make it very specific for each person. Yeah. Yeah. And your access to information should be 10 X, right? It's like you're walking into a conference via your laptop. Therefore you should have the computing power of your laptop and know all the information prior to asking any questions. So uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. You mentioned video as well. So, you know, we, we've been very focused on growing our video content. Um, obviously there's a huge audience out there on YouTube and with audio products as well, like the podcast, which this will end up on as a podcast, but, um, 
taking, you know, our cues well before Spotify started buying everyone up that, you know, there's a new content war coming for people's ears, right? There's, there's a huge demand now that people are probably at home gardening or cooking or whatever, they need to continue to self-educate and get new ideas. I think podcasts are a great way for people to do that, especially if you're an investor. Um, a lot of those old methods, uh, socially getting information that would help you make an investment or business decision just don't exist anymore. You got to go find them elsewhere. So that, uh, that's really interesting that you've really leaned into those. Tell me more about, um, your show and some of the stuff and conversations that you're getting into. Cause I read your newsletter and it's very thought provoking and it's very interesting that, uh, you know, you're always challenging certain ideas and certain, um, you know, stated truths that may not necessarily be things that we should believe anymore. And uh, maybe walk me through a couple of recent musings you've had or thoughts that you want to continue to espouse that, you know, you really, really felt good about sharing first time. Sure. Yeah. I mean, just first couple of comments you made there. Absolutely. We need to be looking at what we're, the content we're producing. And I think any, any business big or small these days has to recognize they're a, they're a media business first. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, consumer trust is probably near all time lows. And however, uh, you know, we relate to people. And if I think about the brands and storylines that I follow, it's, there's always a person at the top of that. Right. That's, that's, that I've developed a relationship with either because I know them personally or I don't. And I just, consume enough of their content that I feel like I know them or at least share some values and um, enough values to, to, to tune in on a regular basis and trust the recommendations, the things, because man, it's tough to navigate the, the noise out there. Right. So if you can find a few people that you trust and stick with them, create your inner circle, so to speak. Right. And, and uh, it, I, I go as far as saying mentorship. I mean, mentorship now is not even a matter of, Hey, Mr. Person I met you or Mrs. Person I met you in real life. Can you spend, you know, coffee meeting with me and, and discuss my life and goals and ambitions? I mean, there's a lot of people who are just giving out great knowledge all the time, very, very much passively. You can, you can dip into it whenever you want and, and take those. I mean, I'll, I'll say this on this show that uh, one of my mentors, he doesn't know he's my mentor is Bill Simmons, right? I listen to his stuff. I've taken a lot of notes off of what he's built uh, at the ringer and uh, the work he did at ESPN completely different industry mm. but so many things i've been able to look at and go yes that works for us and that works for me as a as a as a, as a source of inspiration right so yeah mentorship for those listening does not need to be a one-to-one -one thing it can be you pulling off from someone else and and them and then maybe one day you actually get to talk to them and then you get to ask the real hard questions yeah 100 percent. yeah that. But you, you've reached out to your mentors. I know you've done this actually. And, and uh, you've, you've gone out there and, and reached out to the Rick Rolls and the Frank Justras and whoever. I mean, there, there's, your Rolodex is pretty, pretty deep. Um, who have you reached out to and what ideas have you challenged them on? Or I want to get back to that, that other question I had, which was, you know, just ideas. What, do, what are you trying to get out there that uh, is, is, is going to rattle the cage a little bit and get people? I've been watching you, Jay Martin. I know you're not just sitting there listening to everything <laughs> and just taking it as it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So, so I, I don't know, but, um, you know, all I do is, is super lucky in that I just get to come up with topics that I want to learn more about and questions that I want answers to. And then we, uh, we just hit the ground hard finding the people that I respect, uh, to ask them. Right. And, and that's all our content is even when it was on stage, right. If you dial back to like, you know, the last, VRIC or, or the last extraordinary future. It was just a field day for me. I just got to hang out on stage and, and talk to world renowned biohackers and, um, you know, have conversations about the digitization of our health industry and all these subjects that I dig into in my spare time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if, if there's capital flow in that direction, it fits the business model too. And um, not really any different now. I mean, I'm just, we're all trying to answer the same question, right? What's next? That's, that's yeah. all we want to know, right? Everybody's got the same question. And, and that, that's really all, all we talk about is, is yeah, U.S. dollars surging, simultaneously gold surging. Like no one ever thought that would happen. What's next? Why is that occurring? Right. What are we missing here? Right. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I'm just trying to allocate my own portfolio, portfolio intelligently enough to come out of this thing on top. And so 
um, by digging into the, the purses and plans and strategies of everybody that's far smarter and more successful than I am, then I just, you know, you, you hear as many perspectives as possible, take that which makes sense to you and you can actually apply into your life and, and roll forward. And um, so, so what are, what are some recent perspectives that you've, you've borrowed? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, so, you know, <laughs> or ones that if you were going to share with someone, if you had a little mentor come to you and say, Jay, teach me the way of the world. What, what are the two or three things you've, you've, you've bitten off recently that you're like, yes, you need to know this one. Um, you need to be your business. Uh, that, that has become very clear to me um, yeah. in that if you personally, not your employer, not, not your, your brand as in your corporate brand, uh, you personally need to be able to generate income for yourself, right? In a variety of ways. Um, and, 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 and that approach has changed our business dramatically. Um, and I think it's ensured us actually made us a lot more resilient. Um, and so that's been hyper key. If you're and fucking stay agile, man, stay small. Like we, we scaled up pretty, pretty aggressively in 17 and 18. And I think a lot of that was ego driven, right? It was like, we're bigger now, we got a bigger staff, we're doing bigger things. And it was like, margins are shrinking. This isn't a good idea. Yeah. Um, and, and now we're leaner than ever and we're, we're thriving in an environment that has essentially outlawed our business model. Like this is crazy, but that's where we live today is that you know, we woke up and had our cash flow shut off two months ago, yet, yeah. We're having a great time and we're growing and, and we're offering new products and, and really doing well. And it's only because, you know, we're a super tight team that understands tomorrow's not yesterday. And, um, you know, so, so how do you apply that to your business? Like, you know, if you can right now, charge your clients in US dollars, just do it, right? Like <laughs> stick with the winner, you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and then be ready to, to pivot when that game changes. But, but right now, you know, it's the- I'm a big the, fan of just getting paid. That's a good one. <laughs> get paid, yeah. Yeah, just get paid. But yeah, if you can get paid in U.S. dollars, I know we get paid in U.S. dollars uh, for a good chunk of what we do. So that's that's always nice. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, there's, there's those are some great points. Stay agile, get out there and uh, find other sources. When you said sources of income, are you saying to your staff, get a side hustle? Or are you saying just for yourself and, and for how your company works, you have different business uh, models? Both. Yeah. Both. Yeah, yeah. a lot of my team, they're, they also... You know, they're, they're spin instructors or they're, they're coaching or they're doing something. Um, yeah. and, uh, and it's just like that insurance policy because you never know what's going to happen. We're learning that right now. Right. So. Yeah. And it, the one thing that I, I've started to realize, and you're right, we all, you need to own your, get as close to owning your media as you can be on the engineering room or as close to the engineering room as you can about the media that's produced by your company. Cause the closer the creation is to the company, uh, the closer you are to the, your source of truth and authenticity as a brand. So um, every time you outsource copywriting, every time you outsource graphic design, every time you outsource uh, editing even, that takes you one step further away from the source of truth of your organization and your brand. And uh, I think it's really important for people to remember that. Like if you can do it internally, the tools are out there. We had a chat before this about tools and it's like, you know, if you watch a lot of our content at CSC and you go, man, I really like that or this, it's like, we did it. We did it ourselves. And if you didn't like something, it's probably because we did it ourselves. But um, we, we are big believers in that you own that. And that came back to personality. You mentioned personality and uh, the people who represent your business, you feel like they're part of the family. And uh, so a lot of people, everyone that hosts your programs, that hosts our programs, they work for us. Uh, they've worked here for a long time. They, they know what we are all about. They don't need to fake it. They believe in, in their enthusiasm is authentic. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are really important things for us as well to make sure that people uh, represent the brand because they are the brand. And, um, you know, you talk about hustle, right? Like, okay, if you're not out there building a side hustle, that's okay. There's only so many hours in the day, but how do you build a side hustle in your own business? How do you build um, I forget the gentleman who taught me this term, but you know, you got bricks of skills and you keep, you can build flat bricks. That's fine. Or you can build bricks on top of each other, but what mm. are you doing right now in your, in your company to, to uh, build your skill set and be useful yeah. and, and potentially build value for yourself if not there somewhere else. So hosting, 100%. editing, all that stuff. Right. So um, there's, yeah. And they don't have to be different. You're right. You know, and it's funny, you know, I, I, I use the word side hustle, but I, I mean it right. And you know, when I think about 
you know, maybe the, the various compartments, how I think about wealth in my life anyway, when we come to the income bracket, there's, there's always your cash flow and then your side hustle. Yeah. But ideally, your side hustle becomes part of your cash flow and then you look for a new side hustle and you keep building that way, right? Yeah, no, it's, you know, yeah, I, I do have time for all this with two kids. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. That's a real question, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I feel like being at home has actually made it harder in some respects, but also way easier in other ways. How has it been made your life easier, but also harder? Uh, well, I'm most productive in the morning, so I get up pretty early. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm my, if, if I'm up before five, I can sneak out of my room, get downstairs, make coffee, be at my desk and be uninterrupted for a few hours. It's amazing. Yeah. If I get up after 530, one of my boys will hear me and they're downstairs with me. So uh, in order to, to get the, the solid, you know, the uh, solitary environments in the morning, I get up super early, but <clears throat> um, you know, like it, it's one of those things, right? There's something about being in your office, looking at your window, seeing all the lights off, knowing everybody's mm -hmm. sleeping, and knowing you're at your desk and there's some sort of, I know they talk about this a lot, but you know, there's an undeniable psychological advantage that occurs there, whether you're up in the morning to hit the gym or hit the desk, doesn't matter. Um, but just knowing you're ahead of the curve sets me up for success. Uh, I find, and just puts me in the right mindset to know I'm doing the right things, even when things may not be going my way. Right. Yeah. The, the early bird gets the worm and it's also back to that. Like if, if in doubt, make your bed philosophy but uh i agree with you just trying to get something done early in the day so you have that foundation of one thing i got one thing done today and then the rest of your life and day can happen without any severe consequence to your psych psych psyche your work psyche what is the one thing you like to get done in the morning above all else um if there's one thing it's uh it's i have a a few morning routines but um like I need to do some morning priming, right? Mm -hmm. For me, it's like a 20 minute meditation practice. Uh, and I also do one in the evening and, and the benefit I found to like bookending my day like that is that I have really important, I find I have my important revelations in my evening meditation, but I, 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 I learn how to integrate them during my morning meditation, uh, yeah. which is kind of how they play off each other. And that's been really fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I journal every morning without fail. And, um, Man, that, that tool alone is maybe the most valuable tool I've implemented in the last two years because um, I can look back at like, you know, July 2018 and then August 2018 and September 2018 and there's undeniable trends, right? Um, things that are causing me, causing me uh, stress, um, goals that I'm, I'm still chasing but haven't made progress on. Um, you know, if I see an issue that, that was an issue 18 months ago, nine months ago, six months ago, and today it's like, well, we better start doing something about this. So, so yeah. yeah, that, that for me has just been like laying my life out on a page in, in a way that you can reflect on it and digest it and then action it, uh, better than any other tool that I've discovered. So I, I love it. I never miss that. Yeah. So I, I don't do that. And instead what they do is I put slack bombs <laughs> into our chat you know at like weird times of the day and i tend to socialize my musings and thoughts uh unfairly most of the time with my teammates <laughs> or maybe not it's their choice if they want to get the notice um and i'm very social on how i try to you know as early in my thought process stuff gets out like i don't like to keep it in um, so I tend to try to socialize my ideas very early and then, and I use sort of slack as my diary of how I want to, you know, attack certain concepts or ideas, you know, not all of it reaches production, but, um, that's how I work with that. And, and you also mentioned the idea of space. So meditation obviously is the ultimate, you know, uh, way to tap into your, your subconscious and your space. Um, and that playoff of the evening and morning is so key. I know it's, uh, if you give your, I like to get ideas in my mind before I go to bed, you know, a couple of things, not, I have, a, I sleep really well, by the way, like I, I don't have a problem sleeping. And then, you know, when you wake up, you can let your subconscious work like a uh, passive hard drive. It'll do work for you if you feed it enough input. And I find meditation is really good for both getting stuff in and then getting stuff out. And uh, mm -hmm. so I don't, I'm not going to say 
that I don't have time to meditate, but I prefer sleep these days. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I find that my more meditative moments are when I'm on my family walks or whatever, um, or out in nature. And yeah. Kind of just put the phone away for a minute and then stuff will come to you that you weren't giving space for. And right. That's, uh, that's one way we have strategized with that. But mm. yes, kudos to you. If you can actually, if you make the time to meditate and work out, that's, uh, <laughs> I find that's been really difficult with uh, yeah. the work from home. But yeah, that's just me. Yeah. I also enjoy sleep. I yeah. That, wake up at five in the morning. No, I don't. Yeah. yeah well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty diligent with the health stuff, but, but I get black marks for my sleep. I think I know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Cause I like to get up, you know, four 30, four 45, uh, or if sometimes I wake up at three 30, just fired up and ready to go. But the tough, tough part is getting to bed on time. Right. That, that's the, the tough part is not stringing together five, six days of four and a half hours of sleep and then waking up feeling like, okay, I crossed over today. I'm not working very well. My short-term memory is shots. I'm looking for things I already found twice, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 No, that, that's not the way to do it. So, <laughs> so going forward now, we're going to look at the next six, 12, 18 months. Um, you're, you're still there. You're still in Squamish hanging out <laughs> doing your job. Yeah, fully. Absolutely. We're still here. Yeah. We're, you know, honestly, like this, this event, James has been the best catalyst for my business. Like I, I it sounds weird to say, cause we're an event company, but it's, it's the, you know, if, if you actually do just get that one opportunity in your career to really jump, um, cause someone's knocking at the door, like this is it for us, you know? Yeah. Um, so we're, 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 we're kicking the door down right now. We're, we're just, you know, and, um, between various content initiatives, our deal flow platform, and, and then my personal portfolio. I'm probably more active in the market in the last four months, two months for sure, uh, than ever. Um, and, um, and, and that's been pretty exciting. And I'm pretty bullish on a few things moving forward that we're looking quite hard at. And um, yeah, yeah. So other than COVID, this will be one of my last questions here, but other than COVID, are there any other major themes in the world right now that uh, you think you can tap into to grow your business? Um, any other themes? I mean, for us, I guess it's, uh, I, I don't know, James, I think that my, my business is a conduit and it's a conduit between our, our audience and people who can give an intelligent answer to the what's next question, you know? Mm. Um, and I, I think that, you know, no one's got that answer dialed, right? There, there's no sure thing. And so the smartest thing we can do is just gather as many personalities and perspectives as possible. And then it's kind of like, you got to act for yourself here. Yeah. Um, but that's really our role. You know, we've always positioned ourselves as a company that connects companies with capital and we've done that very, very well. And, and that's what built the trade show business and, and kept the conferences running. And if anything's changed in, in the last three months, it's maybe our perspective that we have a massive obligation to our audience of investors, not just the companies looking to raise capital, but the investors trying to preserve it, trying to grow, trying to protect wealth right now. And so that's the fire in our belly that that's what's, you know, pushing us forward to make sure we're creating as much, um, as much fresh content from people that we respect and think should be heard as possible. Because mm-hmm. right now it's like, it's a, it's a mess out there. It's noisy. It's real tough to determine what's going on and who to listen to. And, and, um, you know, I don't know if one more noise, one more voice is necessary, but, you know, I, I think that we're pretty fortunate that our Rolodex is pretty awesome. And, and we can get a lot of people on the phone and on video that are hard to reach and hear from them and ask them point blank questions. You know, you can talk about X, Y, and Z, but tell me what's in your portfolio. Like, where have you yeah. put your cash? Where's your, where's your money? So, um, and that's really what it's all about is like, let's just get clarity on the best path forward, if, no matter what your position is. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a good answer. It's a good answer to a, a somewhat vague question, vaguely on purpose, but uh where do people connect with you guys? Where do people continue the conversation to find out what's next? Yeah, you can get us on Twitter at Cambridge, mm-hmm. C-A-M-B-R-I-D-G-E. And we're very active on YouTube. That's where we publish content a couple times a week. Um, in addition, if you want to subscribe to my newsletter, it is jmartin.club. And you can sign up there. You get all, I'll spam you once a week with something interesting. And um, 
that's it. Good, good. Well, I, I, as a regular reader and someone who does really respect what you guys have done and as someone who's done business with you for years, uh, I'm glad to see you're doing well. <laughs> I'm glad to see that uh, things will continue to evolve and get better. And uh, I always like philosophizing and uh, sharing ideas with you, Jason. It's, uh, it's, it's a... Actually, you know what? Is your full name Jason? Yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> I want to make sure I got there. I've been calling you Jay for so long. <laughs> yeah it is yeah let's all keep calling you jay all right jay well thanks for joining me on the show and uh again people connect with us online we're on social media we're everywhere uh if you're listening to this on, we're on youtube you can watch this on csc tv and if you're listening please subscribe we're on spotify soundcloud google podcast which is newly uh freshly minted name for it and uh everywhere else cloud cloud overcast Jeez, it's cloudy day but overcast is the channel everywhere so anyway thanks for listening Thank you, Jay, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, James.